November, friends. I can't believe November is finally here. October just flew by. November is going to fly by and then December is right around the corner and I don't know how we've made it. We've made it somehow, so yay, we made it. I feel like I have just lots of little updates and chatty updates that I need to provide you all. At least for me, I feel like I haven't been as forthcoming with life happenings behind the scenes and that's been a personal choice on my end. October was kind of a rough month, at least in the beginning half, with just mental health things going on behind the scenes. So I've been pretty quiet and just trying to take care of myself. And as we come into November, major things are happening, which I will get into, and I'm feeling a lot better these past few weeks. But on the flip side, it's also been a bit stressful between prepping for this life thing that's happening and work and just everything in between. So today I decided not to go into work. I just want to focus on taking care of myself, doing my November planning because it is November 4th and I haven't done any of my planning or goal setting at all and decided to go get Starbucks because self-care and they just launched their holiday drinks and I love the iced sugar cookie almond latte. I think the hot one's good too, but I just like iced lattes, but I love this drink so much. I don't know what it is. It's not even like sweet. Like if you like sweet coffees, this is probably not sweet enough or you'll probably need to add more sweetener in it. But if you like subtle sweetness, and I like sweet and like subtle sweetness, it really depends on my mood and my palate that day. So this is like a light, subtle sweetness. And I really do feel like I'm chomping on a almond sugar cookie when I am drinking this. But yeah, I really just needed to go to Starbucks and get a coffee because it's been a wild ride of a week, a wild ride of two weeks. This whole month's been just wild. Let's get into what's happening. <laughs> November, hello, how did we get here? All right, so the first major update the elephant in the room, which probably isn't a shock if you <laughs> watch my videos, but I am officially moving. It is happening in T-minus eight days and I am beyond excited and the energy and adrenaline and stress has officially kicked in as of this week. So I've just been like buzzing <laughs> with energy and excitement because I've been waiting for this moment for ever since I moved into this place. And it's kind of a long story about my feelings and excitement and just my long saga of, of moving. So I will wait to share that tirade of a story in a future video, but for now, I'm just, yeah, focusing on packing and getting things that need to be done for moving, like booking the U-Haul and changing our address, getting the, the new utility set up. That's been the chaos of my past few weeks on top of just work and life and my mental health struggles. I've been absent from Instagram since the beginning of October when my mental health started really getting kind of tough to deal with and that was a great decision on my part. I've definitely been okay and choosing to be absent from social media and Instagram so I can take care of myself and not get caught up in the noise that is happening around me and it's been amazing. I'm so grateful to my support system through those dark days, my therapist and my friends and George and myself. I have to give a shout out to myself as well for getting through these moments of darkness and, and shadow nights and I'm coming out of it. I'm feeling a lot better. I think now that I can focus on moving and starting fresh in our new place, it's getting me really excited. So since my mind has been so occupied with moving prep and all of that stuff, I've definitely fallen behind on just extracurricular activities in my life, like my art and sketchbook goals and practicing Spanish. Um, haven't really done much of that. I have been drawing a little bit more and trying to, you know, find joy in it and ease in it again. And but I just haven't been setting like a daily 
goal to show up to my sketchbook. I know once I move and settle into the new place and start cultivating new routines and feel like I have space and time to really dedicate to these extra things that I want to do in my life, I can kind of pick back up on those things. So I think like when it comes to goal setting, at least I feel like I need to be constantly working on my goals, otherwise I'm not making progress. But there can be periods in your life when you just can't show up to these things that you want to do and that is completely normal because I just had to make a decision of what was a priority for myself and during October it was moving prep, reading, and taking care of myself. But I will say that I wasn't really showing up to my tending list or checking it or updating it at all and my habit tracker for this month for October and September have just been blank um, because I'm just like I don't really care about tracking my habits right now and that's okay I know when I move I want to focus on establishing new routines and new habits and I'll have the opportunity to show up for those again. So there are going to be seasons in our lives when we just don't have the capacity for our goals and habits and we just need to do the bare minimum and that's enough. So I initially was like, why should I even set any goals or like do any planning this month because it's all about moving but I still wanted to sit down and fill out my power sheets and tending list because I know it helps me just have direction and guidance for the month. I'm gonna keep it really easy. I only have four monthly goals that I want to accomplish or work on this month and one is obviously move into our new apartment which is gonna be a big ordeal in itself. I also want to just publish a minimum of two and maybe up to three videos this month so I will be skipping definitely one week of videos this month but maybe even two depending on how moving and packing goes but I do want to publish this video and then a moving vlog at least. My reading goal is always going to be top priority <laughs> so I want to read four to five books this month and I would say that's doable. I'm going to continue reading the book of Psalms which is just my weekly like action step of doing a bible study and that's been going pretty well and lastly i just want to focus on settling into the new place unpacking my stuff and cultivate new routines and just find joy and presence in the new space which is very very exciting so at like a weekly level i definitely want to practice self-care on sundays i think making sure I take time for myself at least once a week during this busy month will be absolutely essential for me to not burn myself out and just rest and recover and be able to show up in life, in work, on YouTube, as a human being. And of course, every week I need to read, read, read because I want to read at least four books this month. changed as I always do it seems like in these fall videos because cold morning, hot afternoon, not complaining at all. George and I are going to go run some errands and get lunch and then when I get back I'm gonna share my we're gonna do some book talk. We're gonna do book talk, book chat, reading updates, fun stuff. All right let's go. Alright friends, let's talk about my November TBR because I have some 
books that I am currently reading and going to be reading. So I'm gonna start with the two books that I'm currently reading, carrying over from October into November. The first book is actually, I'm listening to it on audiobook and it's a Stephen King novel. Um, I'm reading, listening to Finders Keepers. I wanted to do a Stephen King novel on audiobook this year because I read If It Bleeds, or I listened to If It Bleeds on audiobook two falls ago and it was very atmospheric and I loved all the short stories and they turned one of the short stories, Mr. Harrigan's cell phone into a movie that's on Netflix and I for I forgot to watch it during spooky season so it's on my to watch list if you've seen it let me know what you think if you've read if it bleeds let me know what you think I'm not a huge Stephen King fan I think if it bleeds it's honestly the first book I've ever read listened to by Stephen King I have reservations about his books but it was available through my library and I wanted to have that atmospheric, like spooky, you know, audio listening experience. And Will Patton, I think, is the narrator. I really like his narrating. I started this book after realizing it's part of a series and it's the second book in a series. At that point, I was like, should I start reading the first book and like stop listening to the second book? And I decided no, because I was already kind of into the story. So I decided just to keep going and listening to it and enjoy it for what it is without having read the first book anyway. But basically, <laughs> Finders Keepers is about the murder of this uh, American novelist, uh, John Rothstein, who's kind of like an Ernest Hemingway, a Fitzgerald in this like world that Stephen King has crafted. And he's basically living in the middle of nowhere. He's retired, he's old, and he's kind of out of the spotlight and not writing anymore. And he gets murdered um, by this group of guys and they steal all of his moleskin notebooks, which have continuations of his most popular like novel and series that nobody has seen before. And they also stole money from him and the main guy, the main bandit, thief guy, hides this material, the moleskin notebooks and the money and like it's like buried treasure. So he can eventually read them and maybe sell them later. And then eventually he gets thrown in jail for a long, long time, doesn't get access to these moleskin notebooks. And we fast forward to present day, modern day. The kid, there's a new family living in this guy's house who buried this material in the ground. The, the teenage kid finds this material, this buried treasure essentially. It's been a wild ride. I have like 30 minutes left on the audiobook and it's definitely picked up towards the end. It's, it's very, action-packed. It is a little gory, it is a little horror-y as Stephen King books are, but yeah, I don't think it's gonna be a high rating from me. It's gonna probably be a 3.5 star read at this point, but I've enjoyed it. It's been engaging. The next book, which I am also simultaneously reading in addition to Finders Keepers, is Hester by Lori Lico Albanese, which is another book of the month book. This is from last month and I started it I think on November 1st right after like Halloween carrying in my spooky themed reading into November but this is a feminist retelling of The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne and I mentioned in a previous video how I tried to read The Scarlet Letter many years ago and had to stop reading it because it was just quite boring in, in, in my opinion and hard for me to read, although I would like to try and finish it uh, at some point. But this book is about a woman named Isabel who is coming over to America from Scotland in the 1800s and her family is basically witches. They are witches and being hunted in Scotland in the 17th century uh, and she learns about that and then eventually marries and comes over to America where she meets Nathaniel Hawthorne and they start a relationship and while this is all going on our main character is struggling I don't know if struggle is the right word but she's experiencing synesthesia synesthesia I need to look that up because I don't think I'm pronouncing it correctly synesthesia 
synesthesia. Yeah, I was definitely saying that wrong. She's, she has what is today called synesthesia, but back in the 1800s, they didn't have a term for this, which is basically a unique sensory phenomenon that affects less than 10% of the world's population. A person that has this condition, or it's also called joined perception, often experiences multiple sensory responses when only one sense has been stimulated. And this is a note to the reader from the author. Many creative people experience this commingling of the senses, and there's different types of synesthesia. I keep saying it wrong. Synesthesia. Synesthesia. There's different types of synesthesia. So our main character in this book experiences graphmacolor synesthesia, where letters are associated with colors, and chromesthesia, where sound evokes experiences of color, shape, and texture. Since this was not really a well-known thing back in the 1800s, it's quite a unique and rare phenomenon that the characters in this book are experiencing. So I thought it was interesting how we have a note to that in here because the synesthesia. Synesthesia. The synesthesia parts come out very early on in the book, but I am really loving this book so far. Uh, it's very atmospheric with the descriptions of, you know, the town and coming over to America and I'm just, I've just started this so I'm not that much in. I'm on chapter six. So our character has made it over to America and is embarking on her newfound freedom essentially to do and be whoever she wants to be and coming over to coming over here and having what feels like so many opportunities and also realizing that she has some powers. So there are two new books that I just got in the mail from Book of the Month. They are no the November book picks, which are White Horse by Erica T. Worth. And I also picked up The Cloisters by Katie Hayes, which I'm really excited for both of these books. Also, we have a very dark, a dark cover aesthetic going on. The White Horse is about an indigenous woman. And I think this is, this is a horror book, which I tried getting into horror last year and realized it's not exactly my cup of tea, but I read the like sample of this book on Book of the Month's app and really enjoyed that sampling and the plot sounds really interesting. So our main character loves heavy metal, wears ripped jeans, kind of is that like hardcore like punk person that we all know and loves Stephen King novels. Her cousin finds an old family heirloom. It's a bracelet that once belonged to our main character, Carrie's mother who has passed away. And once finding this, it unleashes some paranormal things and then Carrie's life just kind of, you know, takes a turn from there. So with being haunted by ghosts essentially and all of that, she dives into trying to unpack her family's past and specifically her mother's past. I'm really interested in seeing how the plot plays out with the family dynamic and also the horror elements, how that's gonna play out and also to hear from another indigenous author and indigenous character and also BTW, it is American Indian Heritage Month. So this could also be a good book among many others out there that you could pick up during this month. Final book, which I am incredibly excited about is The Cloisters by Katie Harris. So this blends some of my favorite things. It blends museum work with the spiritual world, tarot cards, so interesting. So our main character, arrives at New York City as a curatorial associate at the at the Met, the Met, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And she's assigned to the Cloisters, which is a Gothic museum and garden. So cool. And they have a collection of medieval art. With that, it brings along some interesting researchers into our main character, her name is Anne, into her world. So these researchers that she comes into contact with through her job are researching 
tarot and they find this rare 15th century deck of tarot cards. I mean, need I say more? Museums, tarot cards, spirituality, research. I love it all. And I just looked at the back of the book and there's like a little guide from the author on reading tarot. I don't think you guys know because I haven't really shared this on my channel that I have tarot cards and I've I've practiced tarot and like oracle card readings in the past and I kind of fell out of that within the past two years as I decolonize and deconstruct my life and had to relearn why I was interested in tarot and its history and connection because tarot really began with the Romani people of Europe and a lot of Romani people have relied on tarot to make a livelihood for themselves, but they are also an oppressed group all throughout history. And I wanted to kind of, kind of get away from tarot because I didn't want to encroach on this practice by these people who are oppressed. Um, but I always enjoyed tarot and it always really helped me through some times in my life and through talking to my therapist about all of this stuff, I am getting back into reading and pulling tarot cards for myself again, which I'm really happy about because it was a big part of my spiritual practice and self-care practice. I'm really excited for this book. I hope it lives up to my expectations because if you guys remember when I read The, La the Lost Apothecary, the plot was amazing, but the execution of the book just fell flat for me and I was so disappointed. So this is like very similar where I really hope that it does not disappoint me. Please don't disappoint me. <laughs> and those are the four books I'm definitely gonna be reading this month. And I have a fifth book, just a mystery book. It could be an audiobook, a graphic novel, whatever I feel like reading when I finish all of these. And I hope I can step up to the plate and do my reading this month with all the chaos of moving that, that that's happening. So wish me luck. All right, friends, with that said, I think I'm gonna end the video here because it's time to start filming my moving vlog. I hope you're excited. I, I've i started doing some packing over the past few weeks or so, but like this weekend is like double down. I need to pack my books behind me. I need to make my space look like I am actually moving because while I have stuff packed, when I walk around our, our house, it just feels like there's still so much work to do. So that's the goal for this weekend is to at least get the majority of stuff packed and just basically be living out of suitcases the final days next week leading up to our move on Saturday. So I'm gonna be vlogging the entire journey and I think I'll do like the last week of like packing and actually moving into our space and then maybe a little bit of unpacking, but I also wanna do like an unpacking and like settling in type of video after the moving vlog. And those will be my like videos for November. And then I'm gonna announce this here because why not? But I am gonna be doing Vlogmas this year. So I think taking a break from videos this month to focus on moving and all of that will give me the creative recharge that I need to show up for Vlogmas. I'm gonna be doing like 12 days of Christmas, so 12 videos, exactly what I did last year. Um, and I'm so excited because we'll be in our new place and I can decorate and do fun things and take you guys along with me. So give this video a thumbs up if you are excited for Vlogmas because I'm I'm super excited and I'm excited for Christmas books. Like I know we're still in fall season, but I've been secretly being excited for Christmas earlier this year. So hope you guys are excited. Thank you guys for being here and for watching this video. Let me know what your goals and intentions are for this month of November. Let me know what books you're currently reading because I always need to know what you're reading. <laughs> and I will see you in the next video. Bye.